Good evening, everyone. Thank you for studying with me tonight. Friendship Blessing and Church's Wednesday evening Bible study, 7 p.m. always. Today is June 7th. So, um, hey, missed you last week, you in-house guys. I love our our in-house time together. Um, but uh, grateful that we have the online for weeks like last week when I got to visit my parents down in North Carolina. Hi, Mom and Dad. They join us most Wednesday evenings, so great to have them a part of the study and for our online version that makes it possible for us to do this, and when I'm gone, possible for all of us to keep studying. So we're in Hebrews. We have been. We're getting close to the end. Now, I'm not absolutely sure yet where we're headed next Bible study, but I will definitely let you know by next week. The book of Hebrews, Jesus is greater, Jesus is superior, Jesus is better, right? Key theme, book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11 through 12 this evening before the end of the Bible study. I'll give you next week's text as well. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for your word and in particular for this letter to the church, uh, to the Hebrews, Father, and for the author, the writer, for the people that were written to who understood your your scriptures, your Old Testament scriptures so well. Father, tonight, the hall of faith, the heroes of the faith, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Father, may your word uh, be alive to us tonight. Speak to our hearts, to our spirits tonight, Father, that we can grow and be more like your son, Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's begin with the Bible uh, Bible Project timeline, uh, maybe our final time. We'll see. I highlighted the section down here at the bottom. See right here in the middle, chapters. They, a Bible Project lumps this whole thing together. We're going to divide it out in your study Bibles. Chapter 13 has a, got a separate uh, topical heading, concluding exhortation. So according to that, I... I separated it, and we're going to study it separate next week. But uh, so this highlighted portion is um, the portion tonight that we're going to tackle, 11 and 12, actually. I did a little blow up here for you. You can see it. Great models of faith. Um, I'll get into that in just a, a few moments. Um, so we're talking about particular Old Testament heroes, uh of the faith, characters of the faith. Some of them are listed here in your Bible Project timeline, but I found a little more expanded list. Uh, this has 22 different biblical characters from the Old Testament that are listed in Hebrews chapter uh, 11. Um, but I'll point out to you, first of all, if if I get my reading correct, like this, this list has Joshua, and this has more than I actually need. It's got the Old Testament references to each one of these biblical characters, and then um, the ministry, if you will, or the activity or whatever it was that that person provided in the Old Testament story. But Joshua's name is not actually in our Hebrews text if you go to 11, verse 30, it says there, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. So um, whoever created this included Joshua's name and then did a very similar thing. Um, Samuel's name is in the text, but not in this list. And then it concludes with, and the prophets and they include some of the prophet's name. I like that. I'm good with that. So um, if you had these included names plus Samuels, we have somewhere around 23 different Old Testament faithful Old Testament characters that are listed in this Hebrews chapter 11. Now, remember, our readers are mostly Jewish. Hebrew readers, and so they're going to know these Old Testament um, 
heroes, Old Testament characters really well. So once again, remember we have 82 plus references from the Old Testament in the book of Hebrews. And so now we're going to get a bunch of them in illustration for those who have been found faithful. So I think the key phrase to our study tonight would be by faith. Key, key words, key phrase in, in chapter 11. Well, here, let me say this first. Um, no, let, <laughs> back to that other thought. Uh, by faith is, if I get, if I count it correctly, by faith is written at least 21 times in chapter 21. So if you go back and read each of the places. If you just take a look, of course, I've got my Bible underlined and highlighted, but you will see verse three by faith, verse four by faith, verse five by faith, by, uh, faith by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, and you'll count at least 21 times by faith is in this chapter. I think if I get my counting correct as well, that a uh, and 27 times that the word faith is mentioned in Hebrews chapter uh, 11. So uh, Hebrews chapter 11 is often referred to as the hall of faith, you know, like the hall of fame. Uh, chapter 11 is the hall of faith, Old Testament. Uh, men and women who were faithful to God, who trusted God. And so um, uh, many recognize it in that way. So I want to read for you a little bit. And then I think there's some key phrases to understanding this chapter. I'll show you that slide in just a moment. But so let's go back 11, chapter 11, verse 1. I'm going to read down through uh, the first part of three, and then I'm going to jump over to 12.1, and then I'll connect it, because I think there's a progression here we need to see. This totally my observation. So 11.1, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By the way, I'll point it out here. If you go over to 39, verse 39, so that verse 11, 2 said, this is what the angel ancients were commended for. Verse 39, these were all commended for their faith. And so um, that that is repeated, you know, what they're commended for. And then we're going to get the particular illustrations and names of uh, their faith. So I just, I wanted to make note of that. But then verse three, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Then jump over to chapter 12, verse one, therefore. So here's, here's our phrases. Let me show you. By faith, oh, let me get there. Therefore, verse uh, chapter 12, verse one, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us. So the, the, the major theme by faith that leads to therefore, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And so it's just an observation of mine that there's a progression that I wanted to dig to study. Um, as a matter of fact, it was when I was struggling with, do I um, unpack and do we dig on each one of these Old Testament characters, uh, which would take us way more time than we have time for. But using what we learn on Wednesday night, observation, interpretation, application, uh, that is an awesome study. Enix, one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Not a lot said, but to me, a powerful backstory to that. So you'll find 
your Bibli Old Testament characters here and the different stories and treasures found in each one. So I encourage you to go back and dig on each one of these uh, Old Testament characters that's uh, that's listed here. But we're not going to we're going to dig on that progression that I've got um, by faith. Therefore, let us and uh, and we're only going to make it that far, really. Um, so. Uh, let's go to uh, verse four. Now, I want to read some of this so that you get an idea for how it reads. For time's sake tonight, please. Can't read it all. But chapter 11 reads by and large in this way, and then we're going to jump to the end, which I think is really profound, uh, the end of chapter 11. So beginning of the verse four, let me read through verse seven. By faith, <clears throat> Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did by faith. He was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him by uh, who comes to him must believe that he exists and rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, see the repetition, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And then verse eight, by faith. Abraham, and then by faith, and you go back to the list, and so and uh, so on and so forth. And so, um, just to get an idea of how it reads, and then, you, you know, one of my observations, because I did read through the text, I begin to catch it here, but then as I continue to read, and this is just, remember, we start with observation, one of my observations is that I realized in reading each one of these Old Testament characters, heroes of the faith, that in almost every situation, not in every one, I think maybe Enoch's exempt here, we could probably find something. In almost every situation, there was some sort of resistance or problem or adversity in each story which I thought was so cool. So I uh, I made, I made drew some arrows to each one of these things. So let, let me show you what I mean and, and follow along with me and, and watch this. So like, let's begin with Enoch. By faith, Enoch was, oh no, excuse me, Abel. Uh, if you, uh, I read that already. It said, even though he is dead. Remember, Cain killed Abel. Um, Abel was the first homicide, murder. The, there, there's the problem in that story, right? The resistance. Um, Noah, uh, I mean, we already know the world that Noah lived in, right? Verse 7. By faith, Noah, when he was warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark. So it reminds you of the wickedness that was in that day and the resistance. Um and when you read about Noah's faith, you're also thinking of the mockery that he received for building that ark, right? By faith, Abraham, even though he did not know where he was going, Sarah, by faith, Sarah, who was past childbearing, she was too old to have a child, um, by, and then I, I, I came back to Abraham here, by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. <laughs> Problem in that story, right? He was going to have to uh, sacrifice his son. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, uh, by faith, Moses' parents hid him um, because of the issue or the decree, right, of Pharaoh to kill uh, these uh, the male uh, firstborn. Um, and then where else? Oh, I, I, this is still Moses. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as greater value than the treasures 
of Egypt. So once again, he faced opposition for his relationship to God. Um, and then uh, verse 29, by faith, the people passed through the Red Sea. The Egyptians were chasing them. There's good in that story, but they were being persecuted. They were being followed. Verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. So the walls were a barrier and uh, obstacle, a, a resistance, a, and then just finally, by faith, the prostitute Rahab. If you know anything about that story, um, once again, I'm just back to that whole uh, idea as I read through this, that there's some sort of resistance or problem or adversity in each one of these stories in the Hall of Faith. So if you're facing any of that, Right now, as we do this Bible study together, I did have an application, an application, right? And so it's just began kind of with a an observation with a question, right? If resistance causes you to lose your faith, well, and then I I, I point out faith is not the absence of resistance. It is trusting in spite of resistance, right? As a matter of fact, we'll learn here as we move along. Um, it's highly probable that resistance and difficulty and obstacles in our stories, in each one of our stories, causes our faith, our God-given faith, to grow. And, uh, and so don't be afraid of resistance. I didn't say like it. <laughs> Just don't, don't be afraid so what what is so i said the key here is by faith and faith and it made me you know raise that question what so what is faith in the context of hebrews chapter 11 and this this will be very interesting for us i think it kind of starts with understanding the difference between faith and belief faith versus belief even in greek i think in english there's just this slight difference even, and we exchange them. Um, and I think that that uh, this is probably kind of easy in Greek to do that as well, but there's there's some actual like big differences. These two words, roots in Greek, are very close to each other. So let me show you first belief. You know the uh, the text, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Um, the Greek word for that word belief, uh, to believe, is pisteo, or pisteo, or pisteo, or something like that. And so that word means Watch what it means here. It means to persuade, to be persuaded, to believe, to affirm, to have confidence. Used of persuading oneself, uh, human believing, and with the sacred significance of being persuaded by the Lord. But uh, you can really see the personal, my decision to believe, to believe, it's still faith, right? And by the way, take note here, there's two words here, uh, pisteo and pis, uh, pistis, uh, that are very closely related, and it's our two words. And uh, and so this one is, is on my part of a decision that I make in belief. But now look at faith, pistis. Uh, 4102. So when you look at these numbers, when you see the reference numbers and they're that close, 4100, 4102, um, that means the roots of those words are very, very close always. So this uh, belief can be translated as faith um, and believe, and then faith also connected to believe. But listen to this, is always a gift from God and never something that can be produced by people. For the believer, it's God's divine persuasion, and therefore distinct from human belief, yet involving it, yet involving it. So, and I think that's important is this word faith in Hebrews 11, belief is a part of it, 
and belief, I think is actually my part, that beginning seed, belief, faith, right? Trust in God. Um, but this word faith is always a gift from God. So you're you're probably asking the question, are there scriptures to back that up? Romans 12, 3 is one. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. And then I thought of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, right? We can't have these without God's Spirit within us. They're fruits of the Spirit, right? So we don't work them up. We don't, we don't create them. Um, God puts them into us by His Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And I'm using the King James Version our other versions, the ESV and the NIV, use faithfulness, but I wanted you to see the word faith. Uh, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things, there is no law. And I think here we begin to understand a little bit more about this thing of God giving us faith that begins with our belief and what our participation in it is, right? Because it's the fruit of the Spirit. So uh, the faith begins with our belief. So what's my job, right? If God gives me the faith, what is my job? And I like what uh, Bible Hub, uh, the some of the commentary said, it's, it says the Lord continue, continuously births faith in the yielded believer. And I underlined that because then our, so you have to come to belief, you have to, that initial believe, um, and then we have to yield our lives to Jesus. And then we can, uh, the birth, the faith can birth in us. And I'm going to use the word now to grow in us as well, because I think the more that we yield, the more that his faith grows in us, right? Does that make sense? So in 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 is a good supporting text for this idea of faith growing. Um, by the way, this word faith is the same word, pistis, or however you say that, um, that word faith is the same one as in Hebrews chapter 11. We are always to thank God for you brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. And so um, uh, Paul obviously wanted to convey here that God's given faith in their becoming yielded was causing it to grow more and more. And then back to Hebrews. So um, uh, Hebrews 11, 6, I think brings this all together. It uses both words and actually uses the word pisteol for believe in that second word for believe in this verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Okay, so God-given faith, because anyone who comes to him must believe, or this faith can't even be present, that he exists and that he rewards with faith those who earnestly seek him, Hebrews 11, 6. And so um, for me, some just some, um, what, what I call it, growing in my understanding of this whole idea of faith. I think we've often used that um, term, that word as totally reliant on me, you know, faith with God or faith in God, or we need faith, faith for this or faith for that. I think all of us, um, it's easy to kind of feel like I need to generate that. I need to work on that. You know what I mean? And really, it's intriguing to see in the biblical text in our deeper study that there's belief that has to take place on my part, 
But faith comes from God. This faith, that's in Hebrews chapter 11, and without faith it's impossible to please God. That faith actually is uh, comes from God. So let's jump over to verse 32, because I, I'll, I'll call this, I love this, this text as uh, chapter 11 comes to a close. And I think the writer of Hebrews uh, uh, brings a crescendo here that is is um, uh, incredible, powerful, and and so um, remember we're listing the people um, uh, in the hall of faith, and verse thirty two, the writer basically says, and I could keep going on, um, and the writer kind of does, verse thirty two, and what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon and Gideon Barak. Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered the kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Now, now watch. The, now we're going to unpack a bunch of the resistance and the obstacles. Some blessings, um, God's faithfulness, but the obstacles and resistance. Who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others, now watch this, there were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced years in flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them, heroes of the faith. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet, there's a key transition. None of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Wow, you see what I mean? This this crescendo of both heroes who had the strength of God and conquered lions and who were raised to life, but then most of them facing uh, obstacles and even perse persecution and suffering and death and willingly to gain an inheritance, a, an eternal inheritance. And uh, so um, uh, I, it raises the question for me, this gets to the point, or what is the point? Here's the point in these verses. And I think um, it's saying God had something better planned for us. Matter of fact, say that something better. Uh, God has something better, right? Uh, God has something better for us. And and that's kind of the, the, we're getting to the point now of this text. Of course, remember writing to persecuted believers who are uh, drifting from their faith in Jesus. And this is speaking into that. So what the question is, here's the question. What was better for the Hebrews and is better for us? Because it says that, right? They did not receive what had been promised. But God had planned something better for us, and only together with us would they be made perfect. So what was better? And at this point, you're probably understanding, right? Jesus, right? They they were before the fulfillment um, of the gospel, the good news. So the better is Jesus, the fulfillment of the gospel, and uh, and the whole the Old Testament heroes were before that. Um, they were not forgotten, right? It says that they were perfected together with us. They were not forgotten. Uh, they were made perfect with us. Um, they were they were waiting for the promised. We have experienced the promise. And so 
you know what it made me think what we've been saying lately at Friendship Blessing Church, it's all about Jesus. Um, and the writer of Hebrews is saying that to these discouraged, disheartened, uh, beat up uh, people, uh, these these Hebrews. So, uh, so it's all about Jesus. Um, now, I think, remember I said that originally that there were key phrase, a progression, and you've probably been wondering when does that come up? So here, we're going to go back to it now. By faith, therefore, let us, and rather than just uh, read, you know, looking at our text separately, I really wanted us to see this text together. Hebrews chapter 12, profound stuff, um, one through three. So now if you've ever read this text and never what comes before it, now the therefore is going to mean so much more to you, right? Because we just did all these heroes of the faith from the Old Testament um, and, and brought down to they hadn't received the promise, but we have, they're perfected with us through Jesus. And then the writer of Hebrews says, therefore, since we are surrounded by those Heroes of the faith, those Old Testament people who are with us, together with us, perfected with us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and uh, the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, pioneer and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So what is the writer saying here? You're not alone. Many have gone before you. Jesus did for you and for them what we could not do. It's all about Jesus. You are saved. You have an eternal dwelling. Uh, when resistance, opposition comes, God will cause your faith to grow, right? So what is your job or our job? Remember what I said, to yield? Uh, it's it's to yield. It's that that place of belief that creates a continuing more and more daily in my journey, a yielding to the Spirit's promptings in my life and heart. And uh, so what does it mean to yield? I like this, and this is actually yield the right of way, right? Any of us that drive know this. Allow one who has preference to proceed before you. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to be your guide. Our job is to yield to him. And then when you're yielded in this text, we throw, we run, we fix, and we consider, right? We're doing a little, I'm trying to land the plane now, and we're going to actually do it very quickly because I, I ran out of time in my preparation, but I wanted to encourage you here. So by faith, therefore, let us, and then we're yielded. And when we're yielded, then we throw, run, fix, consider. It's in that text. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off. Remember that? Throw, run, fix, consider. I, I actually bolded, if you can see those. Throw, run, fix, We'll get consider as a, in our last slide. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. So anything contrary to what God wants in our in our life, because it tends to hold us back, to distract us, to discourage us. To remember, He's writing to the people, the 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 Hebrews, right? Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing, fix our eyes on Jesus. We get distracted. We get discouraged. When resistance comes, uh, opposition comes, problems come, 
And so the the writer of Hebrews is saying, fix your eyes on Jesus, um, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, and then gives a look what he did for you for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of God. And then I thought I would separate this out. Consider him who endured such a matter of fact, let me do this <laughs> because the, we read that text a moment ago and it brings up two things that happened to us, I think rather easily, weariness and losing heart. So here, as we close tonight, are you weary and ready to lose heart? The text says, consider him who endured such opposition <clears throat> from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Remember, faith is not the absence of resistance. It is trusting in spite of resistance. Um, fix our eyes on Jesus. Consider him, which is really in our sermons on Sunday morning, what we've been saying. Make Jesus bigger. Enlarge Jesus. Let me have a word of prayer for us. Father, thank you for our time together tonight as we consider Father, all that you have done for us through your son, Jesus, and for all of his suffering and persecution and resistance and obstacles that he faced, Lord, and yet he came to seek and to save that which was lost, which is me and everybody that's viewing together tonight. He stayed on mission, Lord, for us and loved us as we consider this, Father, be with each and every one of us that is weary and on the verge of losing heart, Father, may your faith grow in us more and more, Father. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Nope, I didn't forget. Next week's text, one more slide for you. Hebrews chapter 13, the final chapter of Hebrews. So read through that observation, interpretation, and application, and I will see you Sunday or next Wednesday. God bless. Have a God week.